Hello out there, all you fine brony peoples. This is Silver Quill, and I'm on a power trip. Having had a taste of just hosting one episode, I couldn't stop. It's like potato chips. And so here I am, welcoming you to another MBS show. And with me is Norman Sanzo. Hello. I'm all better now. Better off than James, who is, shall we say, indisposed. <laughs> yes, yes. We tie him up. He's in the basement. And that's, of course, comedic scenario, and no one can call the cops on us because no one should take that seriously. Wink, wink. Uh, but we're going to change things up a little. Since it's just the two of us, we can make it if we try. There's always the question of, what do you talk about in a smaller group? And we talked it over, and we thought, what what better thing to do than what most bronies do when, you know, they want to kill some time? Argue about Twilight Sparkle. <laughs> uh, argue about Twilight Sparkle. Yes. Uh, Twilight... <laughs> I got no good segue for that, man. Like, do we really want to argue about Twilight Sparkle? Like, <laughs> the internet... Oh, God, Twilight Sparkle. Hmm... Oh, the internet is is always good for entertainment, as long as you're willing to weather the slings and arrows. True, true. Oh, well, at least you're talking about a pony that we all like. Most of us like. Uh, it, it's funny how opinions on Twilight seem to have dra- drastically shifted over the last two and a half seasons. Some people still raise a frustration over the whole wing situation. Others are even more protective. And for some, their opinion hasn't changed because, you know, the character is still there. Wait, people are hating on the wings still now? Oh, yes. Have you read this on your comments or something? Mostly for me, I've been seeing it in Equestria Daily forums and in my own comments sections. Every now and again, there'll be another anti twilicorn Derpy Boru image. Really now? Wow. Like, it's what, been two years now? Oh, some some wounds never heal. Uh, I guess, but still, like, two years now, like, she hasn't changed. In fact, she's gone even more derpy that way. Well, from my perspective, she hasn't changed, but the show has not utilized her role as well as it could. Mm-hmm, I agree with that, I agree with that. But, so, so you and me discussed saying that, hey, let's talk about Twilight. Let's talk about her. So, how do we go about this? Like... We kind of roll into this, but how do we like have a point of reference, or what do we talk about? Well, let's start with how we felt when she first became a princess. Tell me your feelings. Because when, when it started, we were all sort of, wait, what? And there was a great deal of uncertainty moving forward. So, I must ask you, Norman, how did you respond to Magical Mystery Cure's change? Well, I think I've said my piece in the Magical Mystery Cure review where I thought the episode was fine, the song was awesome, but I felt it could have been a two-parter to make it work. And, well, it was the third season and they were short on time. Or I won't say short on time. It was kind of the conclusion for the whole series. And pack it up, ready for syndication. But because... It was very popular among the fans, and also Hasbro made a lot of cash out of this. They say, no, we want more. And I've talked to Emmy Larson about it, asking him about what happened. Like, that ending doesn't feel right. He told me that there were a lot of rewrites. He wrote the show knowing that this was the final season, and he wrote it that way. But somehow, Hasbro said, no, we want more. Rewrite. That's all I can say. But on Twilight's case, her becoming an Alicorn, ascending to another plane of awesomeness, I think, yeah, she deserves it. Like, after all the crap that she went through, she deserves to be an Alicorn. But honestly speaking, it's kind of too fast in my book. Like, her ascension is a bit too fast. She hasn't gone through a lot of proper struggles to get godlyhood or get eloquent status. Nicely said. Now, from my perspective, I've never really bought into the whole she's suffered enough to deserve eloquentness. All of the main six have been through the rigmarole. So, for and I always found it kind of funny, uh, Twilight made a new spell. Fluttershy reformed a chaos spirit. Uh, I'm t- Where's my princess Fluttershy? Uh, true, true. Side note, do, do, do not make a Princess Fluttershy. I've had 
We had nine months of people squabbling over this. I don't want more. <laughs> Although, what is it? There's a toy coming out. Uh, Pony princess figures for Applejack, Fluttershy, Luna, and Cheerilee. Honestly speaking, all those things are just toys. They're all toys, but I do wonder. I do wonder. It would be hilarious. Yeah, but before that, they came out with two other princesses. I forgot the name, but they were Hasbro toy princesses. And they look like Luna and Celestia's mole. Like, to be exact, they look like Celestia's mole and Celestia's height and whatnot. It's just the mole thing. Yeah, it's, it's, really it's just a toy, but I'm like, are we going to see an Alicorn Shirley even in toy form? That'd be hilarious. Princess of teaching. Teaching of what? What do you got? Ah. Uh... Teach me to love, princess. Oh wait, that's Cadence. Mm, true. Oh <laughs> uh, no. That, that's another story for another day. Oh my. But my concern going into this was, well, here's the funny thing, and this has been carrying forward, so I'm afraid this, this concern has been validated in my eyes. The show is very eager to say, look at these princesses, they're so awesome, they're these great role models, and they work so hard. That's what they say. But when we see them on screen, they're like, uh, oh, Twilight, can you take care of this for us? Oh, everyone, we need to do, we need you to do this. Of course, the princess is always right. <laughs> oh, that line, that line, that line. So we have the show talking out both sides of its mouth. It's saying on one hand, print princess is hard work. It comes with responsibility. You have to really be on the ball. But what it shows us is, look at a princess life. It's so charmed. It's so wonderful. You get to wear pretty clothes and everyone loves you and you go to parties and it's, it's the life, you know, all perks. So I'm like, well, which one is it? Because even Twilight, the princess of friendship has only had a 50% efficiency rating on her friendship missions because she's only gone on 50% of her friendship missions. I guess that's the greatest frustration. But also, Twilight got into this role and never really received an education. There's been no trial and error. She has made a mess of things, but it's never really been uh, focused on her. Case in point, the Yak Yakistanians. That was on Pinky to save the day. Twilight got the props from Celestia. I'm very pleased and impressed by what she did. And I, as I've said before, I... I wish Twilight had shared the the credit with Pinky. About that one, do you think that it was with a tinge of sarcasm to it? No, nope. I got a very sincere impression from Celestia. I also got that Celestia knew Pinky had contributed a great deal. But sometimes it's not it's not just making sure everyone has the credit. It's making sure the the teammates acknowledge that it was a group effort. And I, I fear that Twilight did not do that. To me. Or the whole Twilight becoming an alicorn thing, I really didn't mind it. Uh, but what I felt was it was kind of rush. She was just thrown into the role kind of willy-nilly. Like, they wanted to end the series, and it was there. And when she came back in Season 4, I didn't feel like she kind of... How do I put this? It's kind of a mixed bag of, okay, congratulations, Twilight. You're a princess now. What do you do? What is your role? I think that's the whole premise of season four. What do you do? Actually, I think the whole premise of season four is what are you doing anything? Because for a time, she was just sitting in her library pre-explosion, mm-hmm. uh, not really even pushing herself to be a princess. And that's what I meant about her not earning her elecon hood or elecon status. Because when we see... Some characters, like, okay, I'm going to go nerdy with the only character I know, and that's Dante from Devil May Cry. And a more specific Dante is Devil May Cry 3. We know he is a butt-kicking demon hunter who likes to eat pizza and has, uh, well, he's very cocky. But he is capable of dealing with demons. In his journey to, well, defeat the big boss, he develops in terms of skill, weaponry, and so on. And he learns a bit about his long-lost brother. And, well, as he travels from one stage to the other, we as the player journey with him and learn a few things about him and we develop. And from 
starting to end, we feel justified with the ending and how badass it is. And like, oh, we can do this combos and whatnot. To me, that felt great. Or probably The Matrix with uh, Neo. First, he was a scrub. And in the end, he can learn Kung Fu and whatnot. So that was a excellent journey there. But with Twilight, I didn't feel that. Or maybe I'm just not remembering every memorable moment about it. Well, they gave little nods, such as uh, when she faced off against Trixie, she said, oh, I'm I'm even better at magic now than I was then. And we have seen her practicing, but in terms of princess of friendship, I still maintain all this happened in the span of one year. Timeline, that, that, is, that is one thing that we should talk about. Like, how does time work? Well, it's quite wibbly-wobbly. And timey-wimey. You just have to uh, get used to that. Mm-hmm. But basically, she learned basic social interaction and then became a master of such in one in one year. I don't think so, man. Like, technically, her basic social interaction is just acceptable. <laughs> her basic, just acceptable, you get, you get a passing grade. And yet now, uh, this is great. Remember the, the Twilight and Big Mac friends forever? Mm-hmm. And it's kind of funny that in uh, Amanda Fences, Spike mentioned ponies come to Twilight to help with friendship problems. And I just think, so she's the pony version of Dear Abby? Now she's giving advice to other ponies on relationships? She herself has stuck to the same six ponies until just recently. And all this based on a year's worth of experience. Like, wow. Equestria really does work on an accelerated timetable. When you're talking about each princess's role, okay, let's say, okay, Celestia, her role was raising the sun and moon and also taking care of a whole nation. And now that her sister's back, she only raises the sun and takes care of half of the nation. Luna takes care of the moon and raises it and lowers it and takes care of the night's court. I might be putting a hit cannon in the night court thing, but I'm guessing that's what they're do right technically taking care of the nation that's really they're just asking twilight can you fix this for Mm, us true still Uh, and also you have cadence cadence is in charge of the crystal empire and the princesses of love i don't get that like what do you do like but she has a big role she takes care of a country yay you got that and you got twilight she is the princess of friendship and what does she really do in terms of her big role? Because Celestia and Luna take care of a nation, which is Equestria. Cadence takes care of the Crystal Empire, which is under Celestia and Luna. And we got Princess Twilight, who has a big castle in Ponyville, which is under Equestria. You see my point here? Like, what does she really do besides the Princess of Friendship? Well, really, Cadence and, and Twilight are just sort of there. Maybe to one day succeed Celestia and Luna as rulers of all Equestria. Oh, okay. That makes sense. But truthfully, yeah, Celestia is the ultimate authority. She's been at this the longest. She made sure everyone saw she had the biggest crown at that coronation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And basically, she's the first amongst equals, so to speak. But ultimately, one of the things that bugged me in season four was that song, You Are a Princess. Where Twilight expresses doubts about her role as a, as a ruler and not sure what she's supposed to do as a princess. So what do they sing about? You are a princess and everything will be fine. She's worried about her role, so you assure her by reinforcing her role. <laughs> this And this is a theme throughout the, the show, that somehow everything just works out because you're a princess. People will say, the princess is always right. No. Anyone who's been in a in an authority situation knows you have your que- your decisions questioned and scrutinized fifty times over oh, before yeah. breakfast. True that. I mean, as a leader, you have to make the hard choices, and sometimes making those hard choices hurts other people. At the same time, you as the person making that hard decision see the bigger picture, and the people who question you they kind of don't or probably they don't want to see the bigger picture because it affects them in one way or another. Yes, indeed. You are in charge of hard choices. As a proper ruler or proper leader, you take responsibility for those bad choices. 
oh, but not have any of the princesses had to take responsibility for bad choices. Because it seems like they've always had a fall pony. Case in point, Cadence, Crystal Empire. They say she guards it, but really it's the Crystal Heart that does it. But that is a side gripe. In games ponies play, she was out of touch for most of the episode, and Miss Harsh when he comes up and is just like, Ah, oh, Princess Cadence, I've been waiting to see you. And Cadence is looking at the main six like, What have you done? Well, no, Princess. No matter what, the buck stops with you. Uh uh-uh. uh. You are the ultimate authority figure, you need to own this, but no Rainbow apologized because it was all her fault, and Cadence claim a victory for the Crystal Empire, even though she did nothing to contribute towards it. True. I mean, it's one of those situations where this is where I find it hard because the logical side of me says if before you can say anything and Rainbow jumps the gun and says things, okay, she says sorry and stuff and it's her fault. Yes, but in a leader kind of view, I would say, Rainbow, please be quiet. Let the big pony talk now and that's how i look at it because if you're not willing to take the blame for your underling that's that's not being a good leader it's it's 50 50 because if rainbow wants to jump in and take the blame that's good on her she's showing a lot of guts but as a leader you should take the blame and that's what happened later on but it's one of those catch-22 situations uh, for me, it's it's pretty clear cut. Respondent superior, you the the head honcho is responsible for the actions of the subordinate, and all the subordinate's actions reflect on that leader. Mm-hmm. So when Cadence is just lounging on a on a chair, getting pampered or having her hair done, mane done, I just think you know what? No, this is the worst image to show kids of of what it means to be a leader. This is so passive and uninspiring. And I'm sorry to say, very often in this show, the ponies seem to expect the princess title to carry her. Twilight in particular, lately, with Yak Yakistan, with her actions in amending fences, with the hoof fields and the McColts, oh, she's God. expected everything to work out because she's the princess of friendship, not realizing that what this requires is a is her skills, her effort, not coasting on your title. It's like a game of D&D. You're a thief in title. You're expected to do a few things like climb up wall, lockpick and whatnot. And when the party says, hey, thief, go lockpick that door. And your answer is, I'm not that kind of thief. Your party members will go, what kind of thief are you? And then go climb a wall. I'm not that kind of thief. It's like, what kind of thief are you? In this case, Twilight Princess of Friendship, could you please solve this friendship problem? Oh, I don't know. It's not my kind of friendship problem. Like, what kind of Prince of Friendship are you? <laughs> that is a question. What do you do? When I find out that ponies are writing in asking for advice, like, so that's what you do all day? Answer letters? Th- that was in, which one called this? Um, the Big Mac Micro, right? The, no, the Big Friendship Forever, right? And also mentioned in Amending Fences as, uh, as, I can't believe, Spike saying, I can't believe how ponies are coming to you for friendship advice, not when you used to be such a lousy friend. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> so, ne- never went a softball at that spike. But if you think about it, right, like with the data that Prince uh, Princess Twilight has in the whole field versus the McCults, that was kind of her research in action. Like, those are her hard data that she collected. So that makes sense in a way that, okay, I've got experience in handling this kind of thing. Let me use it on the field. Although then she proceeded to tear out and disintegrate portions of her book. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like, Twilight, what are you doing? Uh, we When we talk about that episode, we, we talk about that episode. Like, uh, I don't know. I, mean, I, I don't know what to say. Twilight, as a character, Twilight is a really interesting one. She's funny. She's quirky. She has a Work straight. She has her, um, what you call this, uh, flaws that makes her adorable, and she's just all around an awesome character. I just like her when she comes on screen and when she is excited about 
something or when she's scared about something. It just looks, her looks is awesome. Like her reaction is just awesome too. But when it comes to her role as Princess Twilight, I find it strange. Like, okay, what do you do and how do you solve it? I'm, I'm in much the same way. I love Twilight as a character. She's friendly, outgoing, humble. She's never taken her own benefits for granted. At the same time, as a princess, she's been very unmotivated at times and tends to rely on... Well, she has this expectation that she'll automatically know what to do because she's the princess, when in reality, she became the princess because she's supposed to... She put a lot of effort into learning. I've said this before, and I'll say it until the sun grows cold. Titles set expectations, but they don't bestow qualities. You have to bring that to a role. I, I know what you mean by that. It's like, for example, for me, I say I know how to play Street Fighter. I know how to do a Hadouken and a Shoryuken. Okay, go fight this guy who knows how to play the game, who has a lot of game time experience. I got body 21 nil. Does that mean I know how to play the game? Oh, yes, I do. Does that mean I'm good at the game? I can play against the computer, but does that mean I can go to a pro tour? No. No. And I learned my lesson at an anime convention. Never go into the gaming room. Oh, what happened? What happened? They, they will mess you up. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, what was it? I, I sat down to try out Dragon Ball Z Budokai. Oh. <laughs> I, I had never played even once. The kid I was up against, he <laughs> decimated me. I think I got maybe a punch in. <laughs> Oh, wow. I know the feeling, man. I know the feeling. But that's the example we're giving here is, okay, you're a princess of friendship. The title doesn't mean squat if you're not good at it. Like Celestia is the ruler of Equestria. She raises and sets the sun. Does she do it on a daily basis? Hell yeah, 4,000 year. So she has proven her point. Cadence and Twilight still needs to prove who they are. <laughs> Shouldn't there be an episode where Luna and Celestia are indisposed, either by calamity, a mission, or a vacation? And it's up to Twilight and and Cadence to rule the whole of Equestria for a day and deal with all that comes up there. Technically, that kind of episode did happen. It was for the introduction of Season 4. Uh, as much as I love how Twilight stepped up and didn't hesitate, her sole leadership decision was, Keep looking. For that episode, that was not focused on Twilight ruling. The focus was more on Twilight. Ponyville's in trouble. Please help. So not really a leadership episode. Yeah, it's not really it's not really a leadership episode. It's more of a Twilight. There's trouble here. Come help. So that did not satisfy the idea of Twilight stepping into a leadership role. Oh no. I'm not saying it did, but it was a bad example. <laughs> But it's the only example. Yeah, true. Here's the thing. Luna and Celestia have a thousand-year mythos behind them. Mm -hmm. they put, they've paid their dues. They fought Discord. They've pushed back threats against Equestria, including Tyrek. All these things, they have some street cred. Cadence came out of nowhere. She's just there. They gave us a, a backstory in a book, but uh, it just wasn't impressive in my eyes. Twilight just became a princess not long ago. So you have two two ponies, princesses. They don't have the mythos of the elders. They should be the ones struggling to figure this out. But as it is, they're just, everyone's sort of perfect. Everyone's just coasting on their title. Like, this is a great way to show growth, to step it into a new role. Why are you hesitating? And the answer is... Because it's not profitable. Because little girls don't want to actually be shown real hard work and responsibility. They want to believe they'll just live in a pretty castle. And I'm I'm speaking for the toy company. I'm sure many a feminist and uh, and parent out there would strongly disagree. My kids want to learn that. Why won't you show me? In terms of street cred, the way that I look at it is Twilight is still working her way up. She's studying. She's getting there. She defeated Tarek. Tarek. Okay. She kind of quote unquote defeated King Sombra. She defeated Queen Chrysalis. So, okay. She's building up street cred. And at the same time, she's doing things slowly. She recently 
stop uh, civil civil war is it or uh, what you might call this a feud between two warring clans. She did, or was she the magical muscle as Fluttershy? Yeah, she was the magical muscle, but quote unquote, she did help. She did help with her friend, so she's got that under her belt. She know what to do next time when something like that happened. So she's building her street creds. Cadence, on the other hand, you see where I'm going with this. Cadence hasn't done Dilly squat. Indeedy. Oh, uh, and that's again, that's part of why Cadence is. Really, my least favorite of the princesses. She is there. She looks beautiful, but her her greatest contribution so far is going to give birth to the next generation yeah. of princesses. Honestly speaking, we're, we're we're not bashing on Cadence. Cadence is perfectly fine. She's cute. She's all that good stuff. As a princess, as a character, there's no motivation. But as a, what you call this? As a person or a pony, she's cute. I, I would hang out with her. She's nice. She's underutilized is the frustration. You feel like there's a good character there waiting to be used, but instead we're just sort of, we're just hanging back. A good example of what you just said, Silver, is the one with the Discord episode. What was it again called? Uh, uh What, Three is a Crowd? Yeah, Three is a Crowd. A weekend with those three, like Twilight and Cadence wanted to hang out. Sister hang out. Yay! But Discord came in and disturbed we know that she can pull her own weight and we know sh- that she can blast the tessa worm or what is it uh, the forgot. tassel worm yeah the tassel worm yeah we know that she can hold her own in a fight and recently in princess spike we know that she knows how to do crystal magic yay but other than that she's underutilized i do hope that in season 6 they use more of her as a character but no, I got a strong feeling that no, they're not. Probably not. Yeah. Uh, she's going to become a mom, and we'll see what that entails. But in terms of being a ruler, who knows? But back to Twilight. <laughs> back to Twilight. Yes, we've, we've certainly commented on all the princesses, because they all fall under that umbrella. If you actually tally up the number of princesses they've introduced across the various media... Let's see here. You've got the two toy princesses that mm-hmm. you mentioned. Lily Gold and something else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. Then there's Princess Amore. Mm-hmm. Rest rest in pieces. Mm-hmm. Uh, technically, Princess Radiant Hope was a possibility. True. The four princesses that we know of. Mm-hmm. One, on, one on the way and, you know, I, I fully expect a princess. Not a, not a prince. By title. Oh, yes. And, let's see, Princess Big Macintosh, must never forget. Uh-huh, and Princess Spike. Wait. Princess Platinum. But is Princess Spike a thing? No, right? Well, he called himself that. No, nah, then no. No crown. Can't, can't, can't help you there. So. Princess Platinum, who's that one? I forgot. Uh, from the Hearthwarming Eve legend, this, the daughter oh, of the Oh, yeah, King. that one, that one, that one. All right, all right, right. So, uh... Basically, they've got a roster on par with the Disney princesses, at mm. least in numbers. Mm-hmm. And it, it almost gets absurd after a while. True. Well, I mentioned before, the ratio to male and female is more on the female side than the male. It's almost, it's 10 to 1, it feels like. That's we've true. got we, We've got two princes, Shining Armor and Blue Blood, neither of whom really lives up to any sort of title. Mm, true. And you got Shining Armor, and that's a title via marriage. But still, the title of Princess in this show is its supposed to be special, but with how they're just really nearly dropping it, it's kind of like, uh, I think we said it once, if everybody's a princess, nobody's a princess. <laughs> no, if everyone's special, then no one is. Yeah, true, but the same goes for this one. It's a sad state. Again, much like Cadence, Twilight, well, Twilight has actually more of a mythos behind her, all her adventures. Mm-hmm. But even she is just not being allowed to reach that next step. I, I won't say she's not allowed. I mean, we know she can go higher, but the show writers are, well, they had meeting, we want this and this and this. 
Hasbro says we want to promote this toy, we want to promote this set, so go. Which is too bad. But sometimes when you think about it, like the when when we have our ideas of our favorite characters, like Twilight, Cadence, and whoever so that we enjoy, we have a mixed reaction of hit canon mixed into it. Because when we say that oh Cadence could be awesome or Twilight is the way that she is because she's so lovable and whatnot. Sometimes, to me personally, I mix it with a tinge of hit canon from fanfics that I read and comics that I read. So I, I have that bias there when we say things like, oh, I like Twilight because this and that. Or why Fluttershy? I, why do I like Fluttershy? Because, oh, she does this and that. But it's with a tinge of hit canon from one fanfic I read or whatnot. Uh, understandable, very understandable. It, we we all do bring our own bias into this, our own perspective. Growing up, for me, the princess was a was the damsel in distress, locked in a tower or under a magic spell of slumber, and and the hero had to step forth and rescue her to free her. And that was the that was the plot of like ninety percent of video games. It seemed like no, oh, yeah, true. You got Mario, Mario. Well, okay, Princess Peach Toadstool. Is in a whole different class of weird. Ah, uh, true, true. You're, oh, you you got kidnapped again, and you're sending me a letter about how your latest kidnapping is such an inconvenience. <laughs> All right, lady, you got issues. Uh, I think you got a little Stockholm syndrome going on there. <laughs> but you know, if we're talking about video game princesses, did you remember Princess Zelda in the cartoon, like for the TV cartoon series? Where she was, so she was much more determined and much more feisty. Yeah, that was. A, well, I liked it Zelda better. She was proactive. Proactive. She still relied a lot on Link, but that's not. I don't consider that a bad thing. Yeah. But of course, the their dynamic got old very fast. Oh, yeah. It's like kiss her already, or kiss him. Get him to stop using that stupid line. <laughs> Excuse. Uh, no, I'm not going to use it. Uh, or if you want to go even beyond that, uh, we got Princess Sally from Sonic Side AM. Oh, now she's perhaps one of the best female princess archetypes out there. Uh, she's so, she's kind and gentle, but also a leader, very direct, a little bit of, a little bit of smugness to her. Mm -hmm. But, uh, Basically, <laughs> the Sonic set AM and then the Archie comics surpassed the video games a long time ago. Uh, yeah. Or if you want to go beyond that, we also have Princess Zelda again in Wind Waker. She's a pirate there. That one, I, I haven't played Wind Waker, so I can't comment on that. From, I haven't too, but from what I understand that, uh, spoilers, she kind of took off, became a pirate, well, disguised herself as a pirate, but she's actually Princess Zelda. She changed her name and whatnot. So yeah, that's there. Yeah. And then she, uh, and then from what I've read, she did tie rules. So way to go, princess! You left the place flooded. <laughs> Yay! A plus for effort. <laughs> but still, I mean, we're just comparing other princesses that are in fiction. I've quoted this guy before, but Carl Jung stated that archetypes are a reflection of the creative unconscious, culture, and people's collective will trying to show us the guideline for how you're supposed to grow up and be a healthy individual. Now, who better to represent a young life heir to power, but not necessarily under the full demands of rule yet. What does that sound like? Princess. Exactly right. So when we depict a princess in fiction, we're not, we're not only just showing a good character, we're also presenting, presenting an example to young women of this is how we'd like you to grow up. This is a goal to strive towards. If your princess is like Sally and the animated Zelda, where they are direct, caring, but also assertive, and a, a capable leader, that's great. If they're like Princess Cadence, who has the potential to lead, but is not being shown doing so, then you're sending confusing messages. If your kid ends up like Princess Peach, I am so sorry. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, there's another new princess that I forgot to mention. She's a Disney princess. 
uh, for a show called Star vs. the Forces of Evil. Oh, yes, a little psychopath. Yeah, but she is awesome. Like, she's technically, she's a spoilerish brat who, you know, I am a princess. I am spoiling rich. But her parents technically push her or kind of, uh, what's that uh, transfer program? What did you call that? Oh, a foreign exchange student? Yeah, she kind of enrolled her in a foreign exchange place where, okay, you're living on Earth, you cannot use magic. <laughs> and she learns how to be humble and caring and whatnot with her friend. So, yeah, for me, it's kind of a fish-out-of-water story, but at the same time, she's learning. I do enjoy that. Well, personally, my favorite exchange student princess, if we're just going to lock off for just a sec... Have you ever heard of an anime called Magical Witch Punichan? Magical Witch Punichan. I may have. I just need to look at the pictures. But continue on. She's a princess from the moon. Not Sailor Moon, but uh, basically, though she's sweet and cute, she's actually a deranged psychopath who uh, would become an iron or an iron dictator. Uh, her catchphrase is kill them all. <laughs> what? Everyone is trying to kill her because they want to usurp her throne. But she can basically just uh, vice lock everyone into submission. And basically is the one of the most violent anime characters you'll ever see. But she's so cute while doing it. That would probably just make kids really confused. I think Carl Jung would have a conniption if he saw that. Okay, I'm looking at pictures right now. And okay, she does look cool. But she is a psychopath. Oh my god. This anime. Uh, do you, do you, are you sure you want to promote this one, man? I want to promote it all the way because even her uh, her cute little animal sidekick is trying to stick a knife in her back. Okay, well, what's the anime called then? Magical Witch Puni-chan. All right. Okay, guys, I am not endorsing that you go watch this, but I am saying that I am going to watch this because this looks awesome. There you go. See, I have succeeded in promoting They Owe Me at 25 cents. Yay. Yay. But to be honest, if we're talking about all these other princesses, it might mean we've said our piece on Princess Twilight. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Princess Twilight is... Okay, we enjoy her, but as of this recording, it's going to be the season finale. So we got to see a whole big, bigger picture of what's going on. There's things that related to Equestria Girls and whatnot. So yay, but still, there's stuff there to kind of look and analyze or just talk about and get geek out over it. How can I just geek out and then realize that we're going to go months without ponies again? I don't mind, really. Technically, well, I don't it, mind. We need, we have comics to cover and whatnot. And I might actually get to catch up on reviews. Huzzah! Yay. But uh, it'll be interesting to see. I have no idea if this will be an adventure for Twilight Sparkle the character or if it will flesh out Twilight Sparkle the princess. I'm betting he's going to be the character instead of the princess. Most like, but hey, we'll wait and see. But we we haven't talked about Twilight as seen in the comic books. We've been talking about her as in the TV series. Well, that in the comics she's even less proactive as a princess. <laughs> in the good, the bad, and the ponies, in the root oh, of the problem. Jeff, no, God, oh, oh God. Oh, wow, whoa, whoa! I've I've hit a nerve. Okay. We when we reviewed the good, the bad, and the ponies, that was okay. At first, I thought I, I find this comic confusing. Yeah, no problem. I I I can like it. But after reviewing it with you guys, I see the flaw. I see problems. Twilight, why don't you please ah? And looking ahead, Twilight is. Everyone makes note that Twilight is a princess. Oh, princess, so good to see you. But. She, aside from, again, answering letters in Big Macintosh's, uh, her, her friends forever with Big Mac, she really has not been called upon to do anything really princess. I'm playing devil's advocate right now, but technically if you look at Princess Twilight's role, what do you really need her for? When I am an ambassador for, let's just say I'm an ambassador for the Dragon Nation, I am not going to go to Princess Twilight, I'm going to go for the big Han show, Princess Celestia, not even Luna. I'm going to go for Celestia. In which case, there's that, then that's actually an argument against Princess Twilight because her role is completely superfluous. 
you're actually pigeonholing the character into inactivity because a princess wouldn't be expected to do certain tasks, but this princess isn't needed when there's another princess. So she's just ch- sitting there reading ev- all 2000 books in her library or whatever. Twice. Twice. And rolling adorable raspberries. Mm-hmm. See, we're back to the show. But. Yeah. But true. But uh, the comics and whatnot. But as a leader, I would go for the big hunch because I'm a proud country, a proud nation of dragons. I am very proud of myself. I can blast fires and whatnot and decimate your little ponies. So I'm showing my power by talking to you, the big person in charge, which is Mr. Celestia. There's that. But also, okay, like a good example here is Twilight did her job. She unfurled the banner. No, not that. She did her job in getting relations started with Yakistan, which has, what, a um, thousand moons ago that haven't been done? Something like that? I don't remember. It's been a thousand moons, but really a moon means diddly squat in this world. It's just a really long time. Yeah, but still, she reconnected with them. So she's doing her job slowly. And with the Griffin Empire or the Griffin Nation coming back up slowly, Twilight could have, well, reconnect ties with them. I'm seeing her role coming into play slowly. Slowly. If things are played right. Maybe too slowly. <laughs> yes, well, this season six. Well, who knows? Season six is will happen when it happens. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping... John Delancey's tweet about a year hiatus is untrue. I got no idea how that works because, as we know, the crew are probably recording their voices, uh, animators are animating and doing stuff. So a year could be the whole process and stuff because, as I know or as I understand, the writers do their work. They send it to Storyboard. Storyboard does their thing and sends it to the animators. Animators do their thing. And script is also sent to the VAs. The VAs record. Bada bing, bada boom. We got an episode. Well, there you go. Uh, yeah, bada bing, bada boom. That would probably, that's probably at least six months of work right there. Yeah. And also you have to remember that they're in, they're doing work for the movies now. Well, who knows? That's all for another day, I think. Mm, true, 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 true. But still, we still get pony content. It's not that bad. We still, we still do have pony content. So yay, yay. Alrighty. Well, in the meantime, though, we'll just hope for the best for that Princess Twilight will get to show her best, which is showing her best as a character in the role of princess, rather than keeping the two separate. Mm, true that. True that. I hope that those two things mingle together like twilight and princess twilight they join in together they intertwine because we as fans love twilight as who she is but she is a princess so we also need to see her role as princess we need to see her have responsibilities then we can see the character grow even more well, here's hoping. Mm-hmm. But for now, I think we should call this a good discussion and hopefully giving people food for thought. And also for the listeners, if you enjoy this small chit chat instead of us reviewing, please do let us know in the comments. And if you have any ideas on what we should talk about next time, put it in the comments below because this is kind of shooting from the hip. And well, I find it successful. Silver, what about you? I think it, I think it's fun to just talk and take a look at the big picture every mm-hmm. now and again. Mm-hmm. Just to, to see where we stand, if our opinions have changed over time. But we probably should, you know, make sure you remember to feed James, right? Uh, oh God. Uh, yeah. 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 Oh, I'm, I'm gonna find a skeleton down there, aren't I? No, 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 no. But, <laughs> probably. But anyway, so listeners at home who are listening to this, if you have any ideas on what we should talk about next time when, well, if any one of us is not here to come and record an episode or, you know, if we're kind of feeling not up to recording an episode review, just tell us what you want us to talk about. Probably it'll be about the CMCs or even, you know what, let's go big, let's go random, like video games that we enjoy. 
It could be almost anything. Just let us know in the comments below, and we'll try to work on it. What do you think, Silva? I'm all for that. Yay! So anyway, take us out, Robin. I guess so. Well, on behalf of Norman and the Indisposed James, thank you for listening to our little podcast. I am Silver Quill, and I am Norman Sanzo, and we are the Princes of Chaos. Yes, yes. So, saying so long and bye bye. <laughs>